Hi everyone, it's Nicole here with our Children of Future LaCloche Early on Child Family Center. Thank you so much for joining us for Family Matters today. Today we are talking about parenting styles. What kind of parenting styles are there? Is it possible to change your parenting style to help you be more effective? Um, so we're going to talk about those today. So I have linked um, the link uh, for focusas.org, which has a awesome parenting styles chart that gives you a little bit um, of examples of what the different types of parenting styles are. I'm also going to be talking about Barbara Coloroso, who is one of my idols. I absolutely love her. I love listening to her. I find her so captivating because all of the material that she talks about is so relating when it comes to parenting. She began as a teacher. Um, before that, she was a nun. Uh, her whole backstory is usually in a presentation. So I've actually linked two videos. One is a shorter video about how to change your parenting style. The second video is an hour long video. Um, and it's of her doing one of her talks. So if you have time and you're looking for something to watch, I personally have watched it a couple times already, but I love hearing her speak because I find a lot of the content that she talks about is very relevant to parenting and how um, we choose to parent our children. So. Without further ado, let's jump on in. So there are four types of parenting styles that have been researched, have been studied, and people get categorized in about one of these four. It's important to know that each of the four parenting styles is like a spectrum. So some people are a bit more towards one side or the other, depending on how they parent. So we're going to be talking about authoritarian, authoritative, a uh, permissive parent and an uninvolved parent. Uh, Barbara Coloroso calls these brick wall parents, backbone parents, jellyfish A and jellyfish B parents. So let's jump in with the strictest. So an authoritarian or brick wall uh, parent is usually very strict. They're inflexible. They have high expectations of their children. They often will use punishments rather than discipline, which also leads to things such as shaming. So in the words of Barbara Coloroso, the brick wall parent uh, usually is telling the child, you are the problem, not we have a problem. And a great example that she gives, uh, for example, if your child drops a glass of milk on the floor, uh, the parent might say, oh my gosh, you're so clumsy. How could you do this? You're going to use plastic for the rest of your life. Get out of here. I don't want to see you. Right? So it's shaming the child. The child will often hide mistakes. They don't want to own up to things. Um, and oftentimes that doesn't necessarily stop the behaviors from happening. What sometimes we will see is that they will hide the behaviors from the parents, but they're still doing them without trying to get caught. So let's jump to the other end of the spectrum. On the other end of the spectrum, we have our permissive parents. So a permissive parent is someone who is really nurturing and affectionate, but they really don't have a lot of structure or boundaries. Um, they take that role of a friend versus a parent. So if you think of a jellyfish, they're very loosey-goosey. If a child wants to stay up till whatever time, it's like, oh yeah, okay, whatever. Or they often will use the term, oh, kids will be kids or boys will be boys, um, things like that. So they do have a lot of affection and love however just not a lot of structure and boundaries so children like this often don't know how to own their mistakes so again if we go back to that example that Barbara had given us earlier hey your child broke a glass a permissive jellyfish parent would say oh my goodness dear I'm so sorry I shouldn't have given you such slippery glass no no come over here and have some chocolate milk while I clean this up Basically, it's telling your child that when they make a mistake, it is somebody else's problem and it's not their fault. So things like that um, tend to a snowball, right? And so they don't own their own, their own realities, their own concerns or problems. The other jellyfish or permissive parent, which is called an uninvolved parent. So these are parents who are very low in affection or warmth, and they're also very low in care and control. So they're usually very emotionally detached. They're sometimes very self, 
self-absorbed. They are inconsistent. They don't really have any structure or boundaries. And oftentimes, they have very little interaction with their children. Some parents can be very neglectful. Um, and basically, the child does whatever they want. There's no consequences because the parent just really doesn't care. Um, this is really sad. Um, and a lot of times, parents don't often choose to be like this. Uh, if a ch parent is like this, sometimes there are questions around, you know, where they are in terms of their own mental health. So this is something that if you see yourself kind of veering toward this uninvolved parent, it might be um, important to really look inside and see, okay, why am I not involved? What's going on? Why don't I feel that warmth and connection and affection? Um, maybe I should talk to somebody and seek some, some help for myself so that you can help your children. So what's the ideal type of parenting? The ideal type of parenting is that authoritative or a backbone. So it gives some flexibility, but it's also providing structure and support. So authoritative parents are usually really warm, really affectionate, they're nurturing, but they also set boundaries, have schedules, um, and they discipline through guidance. So they often will do, um, consequences that are relatable to the mistake uh, and they have open communication about it. So they don't necessarily punish but they're trying to teach and guide and encourage. So if we look at the broken glass again, your child drops the glass of milk, authoritative parents be like, whew, okay, well we have a problem. Obviously, your child can't pick up broken glass, but maybe they could get you the broom or they could hold the plastic bag while you put the glass inside, clean up the milk or water together, um, and then talk about it. Okay, hey, maybe this isn't the best day to be using a glass today, glass glass today. Why don't you pick between, you know, these two cups and go from there? Doesn't mean you never let your child use glass again. It just means that, you know what, let's try again another day. It's allowing the child to own the mistake, but together knowing that they're being supported in helping fix the mistake. So is it too late to change your parenting style? Never, never. Um, again, there's a whole video on Barbara talking about changing your parenting style, but just know that it's never too late. We all have um, different backgrounds. We all come from different types of parenting styles ourselves. And oftentimes when we're tired or frustrated, that's when those parenting styles come through. And it might not be intentional. Um, we might have had parents who were authoritarian um, or more brick wall. And we might show that when we're not feeling at our strongest. So it's having those parenting tools in our tool belt to be able to pull them out or taking a breath and saying, okay, they didn't mean to drop the glass. It wasn't intentional. This is not something to be angry about. Sure, I feel frustrated, but they need my help because they're upset as well. So it's taking a step, taking a minute, and there's nothing wrong with taking a minute. Take a time out. Tell your child, you know what? I just need a second to think about this and come back. It'll show them that you are using self-regulation and that is something that you're modeling for them as well as it gives you time to think an appropriate way to help them build on and fix this mistake. Um, it doesn't matter if your child is still very little or they might be a teenager. You can change this. Have the conversations with them. Be honest with them. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that, that you need to give them some choice about, but at the same time, you need to give them boundaries and restrictions that are reasonable. So my question to you is, you know, take a look at your parenting style. You don't need to share it with us below, but take a look at your parenting style. What is something that maybe you wish, uh, you could have better control over? Or what is something that you're super good at doing already? I would love to hear that in the comments. What is something that you really pride yourself as a parent in terms of giving to your child? Maybe it's that affection and nurturing, um, even if that means you're a permissive parent or authoritative parent, you know, just giving them that love and affection is a huge thing. So take pride in that. That's a great first step. 
Um, I also would like to put out there that if you feel like you're struggling with your parenting style and you're not sure which tools to try and replace in your tool belt to give you more healthy options, please reach out to us. We have great programs and um, our wealth of knowledge in terms of um, helping to rearrange or work on our parenting styles. It's something that's always a work in progress. So please, if you have more questions or you want to reach out, um, I am going to link our Triple P website as well. So I hope this gives you an insight into some of the different parenting styles. And again, I really, if you do have it, I know it's an hour, it's a really long time to ask, but you will really, really enjoy it. I promise you she is a fantastic speaker. Um, so if you have the time, instead of throwing on Netflix tonight, throw on this YouTube video and check it out. I hope you guys have maybe learned something today and maybe we'll make some changes towards your own parenting styles. So I will see everyone again next week. Thanks everybody.